Welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Christian, and uh, I uh, am a consultant with uh, Capgemini Norway at the cybersecurity team. Um, I have a long background as a developer, um, 20 years with uh, developing software for uh, against malware, anti-malware, Norman I used to work for. Um, in my spare time, I spend a lot of time building IoT devices and then programming them. So um, this is what I'm going to talk to you about today is that with the advent of IP version 6 coming slowly, there are some security uh, concerns that it's good to know about if you are developing f home devices in the IoT field. Uh, in 2016, in September, there was a great um, outbreak of malware. It was called Mirai. And it was a botnet client that spread quickly on Linux platforms from one IoT device to the next. The spreading mechanism was really simple. If some of you have heard about the Morris worm, it uses, used some of the same mechanism. It used um, known users and passwords, which were hard-coded into these devices. Um, so. Um, it spread rapidly and it was responsible for some of the largest denial of service attacks that the world has seen. Um, it was reported up to one gigabit per second at some point where Mirai was attacking a single host. Um, the source code of the Mirai malware is open source now. This means that there are a lot of new variants of Mirai that uses much more advanced infection mechanisms. It exploits um, binary exploits on other IoT devices and so on. And this affects all kinds of devices, everything from your DVR to big billboards. All right, uh, let's skip uh, over to IoT platforms. And why are they so vulnerable? Um, remember, we're not necessarily t talking about enterprise-grade IoT here. We're talking about home consumer devices that you buy at the corner store for 30 bucks. Um, firmware is often an afterthought. These devices are super cheap. Look at this. This is picked up from some random Chinese um, outlet. It is a complete development platform with Wi-Fi, um, with an interpreter, and plenty of memory. Um, this is being put into children's toys, uh, water boilers, whatever. You know, you can, you can Wi-Fi enable, network enable any device in your home for next to nothing. Uh, problem here is that this is often just implemented for functionality. Nobody knows anything about security. Nobody knows anything about the supply chain of the compiler, of the interpreters, of the languages, the libraries, everything. Um, after it's installed and sold to the customer, the maintenance contract is sort of out the window your device is on its own, there is no patching for security, and your device could easily become part of a botnet. Let's look at IP version 6. Um, some of the features here um, of IP version 6, you, haven't, you may not have thought of much about it yet because it's not that widespread yet. Uh, Germany has about 40% of its uh, backbone traffic being IP version 6, according to Cisco here in Norway, it's in the 30s. In the US, it's in the 30s. Um, on Iceland, it's 1%. So, you know, this is going very slow. But it will happen eventually. It, one of the main features is that it has a huge address space, 128-bit address space. And when, you, when your ISP at home starts giving you IP version 6 prefixes so that you can use IP version 6 on your local network, the address space that you are allocated is in itself much bigger than the total IP version 4 address space on the internet today. So you can have a few um, home automation devices. Uh, it has very efficient neighbor discovery, and each device has a unique address on the internet and can be directly addressed. There is no need for NAT anymore. Some, of, some security challenges here is, of course, that the the consumer equipment you buy at the same said corner store will not have a firewall that supports IP version 6. It will say IP version 6 ready or compliant, um, but um, it doesn't really uh, have the firewall. And another biggie is that the, the link local address, the, lo the address of the local device, is the same as on the internet. You can deduct or the, the um, 
the address of the device on the internet directly. Um, so what would the virus Mirai sibling do? It would um, use neighbor discovery, it would exfiltrate local device addresses, it could listen to command and control messages from the botnet con command and control without making itself known. It doesn't need keep alive messages to stay on the network. It could even subscribe to a command and control multicast group. Multicasting is very efficient under IP version 6. So, how do we secure IP version 6 at home once it reaches your doorstep? Well, you can do it the old traditional way. It's no biggie. You can implement nothing, NAT version 6, so that all your uh, local addresses are virtual or, or your own and not routable. You can install a firewall that will reject all incoming version 6 uh, connections. But my prediction is that this is not a viable way to go because IP version 6 can give you some excellent services that will be important in the years to come. There will be low latency communications between your home and your neighbor. There is no routing happening in between, almost. Um, there will be everything as a service. In home automation, you usually have some uh, back end up in the cloud somewhere that needs to communicate with your devices. Your devices need to stay in, connect, uh, in contact with the cloud. This is not necessary anymore. Your cloud services can reach every device uh, individually. No problems and no latency. It's great. And because of the lack of or, or that it's not necessary to keep alive messages, you can have dormant IoT devices that are battery operated and that will still be reachable from the internet. So, so that's my prediction. I think uh, IP version 6 is going to be important in these fields in the future, not to mention um, uh, 5G networks and, uh, and uh, that's also going to help promote IP version 6, I believe. So when you design software, there are some things you need to know or assume. Um, your devices will be directly from the, uh, accessible from the internet. You cannot rely on security in your local network. Um, the address space does not provide any real security. I hear a lot of people saying that this, is, this space is so huge that nobody can scan you. Well, you can't scan the IPv6 address space in a traditional manner, but your addresses will leak. You are using external services that will log your connections and will know your prefix. The perimeter defense in your home will become less important. That's not where the security is. And for a home user, that was way too complicated anyway. There will be exploits in the tools that you are using when you program IoT devices. Um, both the OSs, the libraries, everything that comes with it. So you must provide automated, secure patching of your devices. You can't just send it out the door, get paid, and forget about it. Um, it's just going to end up as a member of a, a botnet. So design for zero trust. These um, this re recommendations here are, of course, valid for any kind of development on, on any kind of networks, but, but it will become more, uh, more um, important in an IP version 6 world. So, thank you.